Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. All right, um, I want to continue our discussion of social issues as regards abortion. And I want to discuss two facets of this topic, which would be the connection between conception and abortion, as we uh, talked about last time, the topic of conception. And then I also want to talk about the topic of personhood, which which may uh, end up turning into another episode. But we will see. I've actually tried to record this episode two other times already, um, and I haven't been able to get my thoughts out in a, in a way which conveys properly what I'm trying to say. So this is actually this is actually my third try on this topic. Um, usually with these episodes, I can just kind of lay stuff out there, and it. I think I've, I've digested enough material uh, from various sources that a lot of topics come more naturally to me. But this one, I think, A, because it it is a very contentious topic right now with the overturning of Roe versus Wade just having it happened. Um, and I, I know some people in my own life who are very angry over that decision of overturning Roe versus Wade. And this is a very emotionally charged issue. So I'm trying to bring more light than heat to this discussion. And, and I know how sensitive it can be, which is why I'm trying to be sensitive and careful in the way that I discuss it. Okay, so the relation between conception and abortion, I think, should be clear to people, especially if you've been involved in the pro-life movement. But if maybe you haven't, if this is, if you haven't thought much about this topic, um, it may not, it may not be so clear. Now, as we discussed last time, the uh, conception, as far as we know, is the beginning of life, scientifically. When the sperm and the egg unite, there's no other point in which we can say this is the beginning of life from a biological standpoint. Because from there on, it's just, it's a gradient. Uh, there's no there's no beginning point or ending point that's uh, determinable because from then on, the, the human being is growing. So... The only way that that we could determine a different starting point is if somehow we knew when the soul was infused into the body. But that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, particularly with Catholic theology, because as we've discussed in some previous episodes, according to Catholic dogma, actually, as defined by the Council of Vienne, in the 13, 13, no, in the 1400s, I think, um, early 1400s, the Council of Vienne said that the, the soul is the form of the body. Meaning that the soul really is nothing um, of itself that can subsist without the body. Okay? Just, in, and I've given this example before, just in the way that uh, when you have a house, the form of the house is is what makes it a house. The matter is the wood and other things that make it up. With Without the matter, there's no house. Without the form, it's just wood in a pile somewhere, right? So in the same way, with a human person, 
without their body, uh, despite, or, uh, not despite, but barring a miracle of God, a human person without their body is not a human person. Now, in Christian theology, we believe that God, by a miracle, holds the form of the body in existence, and thus the human person in existence as separate from the body, but that's a miracle. Um, and that, that's what happens, you know, between the time of death and the bodily resurrection at the end of time. So we've, I think we've discussed that issue enough for people to understand where I'm, where I'm coming from there. So the whole, the whole idea of God infusing the soul into the body kind of presupposes that the soul is some sort of a ghost in the machine, which is, by Catholic standards, heresy. Um, so, and I just, I think, really, it, it's just bad philosophy. So, conception is the moment of the beginning of human life. Now, the reason why this relates to abortion and why pro-lifers are uh, generally, uh, oftentimes, against abortion at all, to- at all points, meaning at all points after the conception of the new human being, is because it, it, it logically follows that if life begins at conception, therefore to terminate life after conception would be either killing or murder. And pro-life advocates would argue that it's murder because of the definition of murder being the taking of an innocent human life. A baby in the womb is utterly innocent, unless you want to, you know, get real technical and talk about original sin and things of that nature. But as regards human actions towards it, the, the baby, the human baby, is utterly innocent, has done nothing wrong by, by human standards, okay? A, a human baby has no personal sin. It has original sin, and we can get into that, that distinction at some point. Well, it might be helpful to define it now. Personal sin would be that sin which I personally commit, right? Original sin is, in, in Catholic theology, as determined by the Council of Trent, um, original sin is, is basically the, the, the stain, quote-unquote, that that man receives biologically from his ancestors, and ultimately from his first ancestors, Adam and Eve, because of their original sin. That that stain infects infected their uh, their their being, their their body and their soul, their form and their matter, and thus. Uh, in order to pass on biologically, uh, in order to pass on biologically, they would have to transmit some of that defect onto their progeny, onto their descendants, right? So that's basically the definition of original sin. There is some leeway here and there. Uh, Eastern Catholics um, and Eastern Orthodox take a little different of an emphasis on this. Um, they, they kind of look at it from a different angle, but that's basically the, the Western view on original sin. So, so the child is innocent. The child is completely innocent, and thus, in order to uh, take that child's life, it would be considered murder, which is why the the pro-life community considers abortion murder. It's just it, it's a it's a logical argument from one premise to the other to a conclusion. If you disagree with the premise that life begins at conception, then then that's fine. But you're going to have to take that up with the biologists. I mean, just go back to your high school science teacher and ask them. So, okay, so this was our discussion about how the issue of 
conception connects with the issue of, of abortion. Next time, I, I want to discuss personhood and how this relates to the issue of abortion. Because I think that's another very important discussion that people bring up. And at least from a philosophical basis, it's, it's a more tricky question. It's a, it's a trickier question. Um, the Catholic Church has a philosophy of this that I think is very robust. And if you agree with the premises, it is a completely uh, sound and uh, valid argument. But if you don't agree with the premises, then you know that, that's where we're going to have to be. So, all right. We will pick this up in the next episode on personhood. Thank you. Oh, uh, real quick, real quick, please feel free to uh, subscribe to any of my podcasts on any of the podcast players. Find me on YouTube. Please subscribe. Like me on Facebook, like the Catholicism Card channel on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're all there, Catholicism Card. Find me. And then I also have a Patreon account if you wish to support what I do at, at this podcast and this YouTube channel. And you can also support us on anchor.fm. There's a support button there you click on. I also have links to all of this on my website's support page at www.catholicisminthecar.com.